Hi, and welcome to the introduction to cloud computing course. In this first module, I'm going to talk about what we had before cloud, because for me to be able to explain how cloud is different, you need to know what we had before. So we're going to discuss traditional on-premise solutions, also co-location solutions, and then in the next lesson, I'll talk about server virtualization. Server virtualization gave us a lot more flexibility in how we can deploy our data centers. And it's also one of the main enablers that made cloud possible. So this first lesson, I'll talk about on-prem and colo. So on-prem, on-premises first. With on-premises solutions, this is what we've had really since IT first began. With on-premises, all equipment is located in your building, with you being the enterprise, and all equipment is owned by you. There's clear lines of demarcation. Unless you've only got one office, you're a very small company, you're going to have multiple offices and you're going to want to have connectivity between those offices. All of the equipment that is in the offices is owned by you and is your responsibility, but the network connections between your offices, that's going to be the responsibility of your network service provider to maintain those and make sure that they're up. And you'll have an agreement with your network service provider about that. All of the equipment in your offices has to be paid for upfront. So you've got that one time upfront fee and it's a capital expenditure cost. New equipment will typically take at least a week to deploy because it needs to be approved by management for the purchase. You need to order it. It needs to get delivered to your location. You then need to unpack it and install it in the rack and you then need to configure it as well. So really one week is a pretty optimistic time frame. Also, equipment is going to need regular technology refreshes because equipment gets out of date. If you look at the CPUs that we have now, they are a lot more powerful than what we had five or 10 years ago. So you're not going to want to have outdated equipment. You're going to need to replace it fairly regularly. Also, you're going to want to consider redundancy as well. If you're running mission critical applications on your equipment, things that are really important for your business to function, you're going to want to make sure that it's always available. So you're going to want to eliminate any single points of failure. So if one piece of equipment fails, there's another one there as a backup already waiting ahead of time. So while we're talking about mission critical applications, if you do have these, you're going to want to make sure you've got high availability. You're going to want to make sure that the facility that your equipment is located in is hardened. And there's actually standards for how hardened, how available our data centers are. And the, the higher the number of the tier, the more highly available the data center will be. So starting down at the bottom layer, we've got a tier one, which is expected to have a 99.671% availability, which equates to an annual downtime of 28.8 .8 hours. With tier one, there's no requirements for redundancy there. With a tier two data center, it needs to be more available. So an annual downtime of only 22 hours. It only requires to have one path of power and cooling. So we don't need to have physically separate redundant paths, but we will expect to have some redundancy for some of the power components. Moving up, a tier three data center and it's annual downtime of only 1.6 hours and it is required to have multiple power and cooling paths and it needs to support n plus one fault tolerance n plus one means that, for example if you had four generators if you required four generators to supply the required power then you would put in five you would put in a spare and with the power, it needs to be able to sustain a 72 hour power outage from the grid and still be able to provide backup power from generators. 
And then we have the highest level, a tier four data center that has an annual downtime of just 0.4 hours. Obviously, the higher the tier, the more expensive it's going to be to build that facility. And if you did want to have a highly available facility and you're building it yourself, that's obviously going to be a huge upfront capital expenditure cost. So a way that you can make this more affordable is by using a co-location facility. A co-location center or colo is a data center location where the owner of that facility rents out space to external customers. The facility owner provides the power, the cooling and physical security and the customer will put their own servers, storage and networking equipment into the facility. Independent colo providers such as Equinix offer customers multiple network connectivity options through a choice of network service providers that have got con connections coming into the facility. And most network service providers will also typically peer with each other in those colo facilities. So if your big network service providers like Verizon, AT&T, they'll have connections coming into the colos and they also peer in there as well. In fact, that's how network connectivity works across the internet. Looking at the characteristics of colo solutions, your server infrastructure from the point of view of the customer is located in an external colo building but it's just your servers that you're going to have in there. Obviously, your users aren't going to be based in the Colo building as well. You're still going to have your own office where you're going to have your own staff with their own desktops, and you're going to require connectivity from your office to the Colo facility so that your users get access to their servers. The Colo provider owns the data center facility and is responsible for providing highly available power, cooling, and physical security according to the terms of the service level agreement that you have with them. You own your own server, storage and networking equipment within the Colo facility. And the connections between your offices and the Colo are going to be your network service provider's responsibility. You'll also have an agreement with them as well. More characteristics, your equipment within the Colo facility is a capex cost. You still had to buy it as an upfront cost, so that's capital expenditure. But the monthly Colo hosting fees are now an operational expenditure. Difference between capex and opex. Capex is a one-off upfront cost, and opex cost is an ongoing monthly fee. This makes having a highly available data center more affordable because rather than having to pay for that huge big upfront capex cost you can pay it as a monthly opex cost new equipment is still typically going to take over a week to deploy because you still own and provide the equipment in the data center so you're still going to have to go through the same process again of ordering it, having it delivered, cabling it, and configuring it as well. And again, you still own the equipment, so you're still going to have to update it regularly to keep it up to date as well. You need to consider redundancy for the hardware that you own. For example, if you've got mission critical servers in there, you're maybe going to look at clustering those servers so that there's not a single point of failure but the redundancy for the power and cooling is handled by the facility.